Are we live? What's up guys? In this video, we're gonna look at Jeff Cavalier's most recent video where he addresses the haters. I think it is overall a pretty good video, one of his better ones, but there are a few major issues in it that certainly need to be discussed. I got some goodies in here, right here for you. This is what I use. I got some farm school grade HGH, uh, dude. low dose trend, and dude, best of all, low grade beaver trend clients. Yeah, you man, want I'm, any? I'm good, man. I'm, what I'm, do you mean you're good? I'm good. Bro, these are gains. Do you want gains? I'm, dude, I'm you don't want gains? This is where your gains are in this bag. So it starts out and Jesse is standing there with a fanny pack. Of course, that's how things are done here. And he says, like, yo, man, you want you want to score some GH, some some beaver tranquilizer, which is legit pretty funny. However, it doesn't really exonerate him. It's not like you can make a joke about taking steroids, and that means you're not on steroids, okay? And they also didn't mention testosterone, which is probably, if anything, what he would be on. So I don't think this really answers anything. Uh, of course, he, he tends to answer things in like a joking, indirect way, but this doesn't actually say anything, okay? It doesn't really address any of the issues. Especially if you apply a science to what it is that you're doing. So then he talks about using science to get stronger, which is hilarious for two reasons. One, he had to use fake weights. Two, he's not a science-based coach, okay? He likes to throw that word around, but it doesn't actually mean that he's science-based. He, he absolutely does not read research on a regular basis. I can guarantee that. Look at the description of his video. Zero, yes, zero, chest striations. Zero references, zero citations, zero studies, meta-analyses, nothing, okay? It's as simple as two words. Fake weights? Progressive overload. Let's say a heavy compound movement like the dead. So his deadlift form is questionable, and by questionable, I mean it looks like a question mark. His spine is more rounded than Kim Kardashian's ass. Honestly, this is horrible, and if people deadlift like this, you're going to get messed up. For someone who says, leave your ego at the door, this is peak hypocrisy. This is just absurd. Because he has millions of followers, and already 457,673 people have watched this video, if someone deadlifts like this, they're going to get messed up. Maybe not the first time, but eventually it's going to happen. In fact, I can guarantee you if he deadlifted like this for, you know, on a regular basis, he would also get messed up. And there are tons of clips online of him talking about the dangers of deadlifting like this. So for him to deadlift like this, just to move weight, to shut the haters up, is absolutely ridiculous. He doesn't give a damn about his followers. Because if he did, he wouldn't be showing them shit like this, okay? If he actually cared, he would be showing them good, proper technique. If he deadlifted three plates with perfect form, that is going to be a much better result, not for him, but for his fans, for his followers, for the impressionable youth that are actually watching his videos. But instead, we get to see this, and it really is a shame. You know, someone who has this much reach putting out garbage like this just to shut the haters up, it, it's honestly really, really disappointing. So he goes two plates, three plates, three and a half, four, and then four and a quarter. So it looks like he tops out at around 425-ish pounds, uh, which is a little bit over 180 kilos, maybe 190-ish. But the point is... This doesn't shut the haters up, okay? I wouldn't even classify myself as a hater. He probably would, but no. I'm just a guy who's against fraud. I'm against people lying. I'm against people just trying to make money off of impressionable youth. And, you know, 495 is not the same as 425. That is a big, big difference. That's a huge difference. Second, he did 495 for a pretty easy double. He actually had pretty good bar speed. Compared to here, he's just getting bent over. And I don't just mean from the commenters, I mean by the actual barbell. Plus, you know, he's still deleting comments. Take whatever effort you provided last time and do more the next time. In other words, harder than last time. Harder 
harder <laughs> of what it would look like. There's more effort being performed here. I think if you did nothing else but simply up the effort level of the exercises you're performing, you would find the time that you're resting in between sets. You see, your interset rest period can actually be a great opportunity for you to create overload by simply decreasing it. So this has actually been studied and it's not always a good way to progressively overload. In terms of strength, in terms of size, both of them are not always going to be better if you just rest less. In fact, they compared one minute and three minute rest times. The three minutes gain better size and better strength. So it's not always just reduce your rest times, that's going to be a progressive overload. You might actually get worse results by doing that. And if he actually read science, he might have actually seen this paper and he wouldn't be spouting this kind of BS. You can see here on a standard deadlift that the bar sits about eight and a half inches off the floor. For me, when I get it to the top, it's traveled a total of 28 inches. That gives us a displacement of that bar. If I simply stand on top of a two inch plate and perform the same lift, that displacement has increased, right? I have to overcome the additional two inches. What that does is I've had to move this bar an additional 10% or more to perform the same exercise. That is a form of increased overload. Even though the weight stayed the same, the travel was longer, the work performance. So then he talks about increasing the range of motion as a different way to progressively overload. And he is right. But the main reason why a deficit deadlift is more difficult and going to be more effective is not because of the range of motion. It's because your leverages are worse in that bottom position. So you have to get in a more scrunched up position. You have to use uh, worse leverages in that bottom position and thus you're going to get more out of it. It's not actually because of the range of motion. It's because of the leverages changing. So then he talks about accommodating resistance, which is going to be bands, chains. It shows him doing uh, a curl with band attached. He doesn't do these, okay? He doesn't, I guarantee you, he does not do this exercise. Probably the first time he's ever done this exercise was on this video, okay? So you don't need this. If you look at bands and chains, a lot of them were from Louis Simmons of Westside Barbell, and they're not even really used very much anymore. Occasionally, powerlifters use bands. Chains aren't really that common. More and more powerlifters are just using straight weight. They're just using the bar. They're not even using accommodating resistance. So if professional, high-level, elite powerlifters are not bothering with this, should you? Because Probably you're not. accruing time under tension. Well, I can incorporate a pause into any lift I do. We can do a pause deadlift. You rip that thing off the floor, but you stop below knee level and you hold the bar. To be able to reinitiate without momentum, we're going to get into that next, and pull that bar all the way up to the top. Again, more overload than had you just ripped the bar from then the floor. Then he talks about pause reps, which I think is a really good point. Um, however, time under tension isn't always going to be all that important. I think if you're training slowly to get more time under tension, it's not going to be effective. Again, as someone who says train like an athlete, training slowly isn't really going to be training like an athlete. So I guess he makes a good point, and I agree to a certain extent, but the time under tension line is something I hear all the time, and for the most part, it is not going to be useful for any kind of strength or size gains. However, I do incorporate pause reps in my own training and my clients training all the time. So that is a good method to progressively overload. Here to the deadlift as well. I'm sure you've seen people do touch and go deadlifts, which look like this, or a regular deadlift. Now the touch and go deadlift is not something that should be avoided altogether. It depends on what you're training for. If you're looking for more of a metabolic effect from the deadlift, you can use a touch and go form. If you're looking to create overall strength from the exercise, then you're going to want to stop on every single repetition pull from the floor from a dead stop, hence where the name comes from. Either way, if you were used to doing touch and go deadlifts and you switch to a regular traditional deadlift, you're going to have effectively an increase. Uh, and then he talks about momentum, which as like an athlete channel, this is sort of interesting. I mean, if you saw Usain Bolt sprinting by, would you be like, whoa, dude, momentum, come on, come on. Lunges, lunges, stop running. No, okay. Momentum is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, and then he talks about touch and go deadlifts. You shouldn't, I mean, you shouldn't do touch and go deadlifts. I'll say that just right away. Just don't do them. They're not worth it. It's not really going to be a good idea. Even someone like Larry Wheels, who used to do touch and go, now he does exclusively dead lifts. It's a dead lift. It starts from a dead stop. Don't do touch and go reps. If you want to get constant tension, 
just do a Romanian deadlift. Reduce the weight and do an RDL, which is going to be much safer and much more effective as well. All right, on the whole, I don't think this is a terrible video. It's much better than his usual content. Ooh, burn. Uh, but still, there are some juicy, succulent tidbits in this video. Definitely go check it out. However, this in no way proves that he used real weights before. If anything, it's the opposite. It shows that, okay, he deadlifted 425 with really, really questionable form. It's not saying his 495 for a double was legit at all. I can't wait for next week when he benches 225 for an ugly single and people say, oh yeah, his 315 for you know three or four reps in a pin press is legit. Because this is just silly. This isn't really addressing anything. If anything, it's just minutia. It's just distractions. It's just trying to get people to move on because he doesn't want to deal with this bad press. And you know what? It'll probably be effective. If you look at his comment section, everyone is just s and on that D. You know, anything, anyone who's not is just deleted. They're just <laughs> comment censored, gone. If you say anything about fake weights or technique or anything, goodbye, see ya. If you're not praising him, you're gone. And I think that is a very toxic community. I don't think anyone should ever delete comments unless they are really, really, really bad or attacking. But if it's just like people questioning him or pointing something out, you know, that really shows the size of his ego. You know, he didn't leave it at the door. He brought it in. So let me know what you think. Does this exonerate Jeff Cult Leader or Cavalier? And uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.